Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to learn about limiting reactants and how to apply this concept in chemical calculations using equations. Alright, the idea of a limiting reactant can be easily understood by considering the following example. So let's say if you are making cheese sandwiches and you look at the equation here, for every sandwich I need two slices of bread and one slice of cheese to make one sandwich. Okay, so it's in this ratio 2 is to 1 is to 1. Okay, let's say if I give you 10 slices of bread and 12 slices of cheese, can you tell me how many sandwiches I can make? What's your answer? 5? Yes, if your answer is 5, you are right because for 10 slices of bread, I will actually need 5 slices of cheese but I actually have 12, okay? So what we say that I have excess amount of cheese because I only need 5, okay? Then we will say that bread is my limiting reagent because it's not enough, okay? So at the end of the whole thing, I will use up all my bread and I'll be left with 12 minus 5, 7 slices of cheese in excess, okay? And my U will be 5 pieces of sandwich. So looking at the definition on top, the limiting reactant is completely used up in the reaction. So in this case, my 10 pieces of bread will be completely used up. Okay, and I have excess amount of cheese, but in the end, no matter how much of cheese I have, the number of sandwiches I can make is limited by the slices of bread because this is the limiting reagent. Okay, now you might think that Okay, the limiting reagent to identify is always the smallest number. Okay, that's not true. So let me show you another example. If I have 14 slices of bread, okay, and I have 12 slices of cheese, okay, can you tell me what is the limiting reagent here? Okay, so some of you might jump to conclusion and say, okay, 12 is the smallest number, so it's the limiting reactant. Okay, so that is not correct. So again, if you were to exercise some common sense here, all right, 2 is to 1, so which means that for 14 slices of bread, I would need 7 slices of cheese, okay, but I actually have 12 again. So in, in the same sense, uh, cheese is still in excess, okay, and bread is my limiting reagent. So it doesn't mean the smaller number is the limiting reactant. Likewise, all my bread will be used up, so in the end, I can make 7 pieces of sandwich. Okay, so this example, um, I want to drive across a few points, so we scroll down here. The limiting reagent, number 1, is completely used up in the reaction. Okay, and we look at the limiting uh, reagent to determine how much product will be formed. I cannot look at the one in excess, so cannot see here there is 12 and I say there is 12 sandwich, no. Okay, so look at the limiting reagent to determine the amount of product form. Lastly, like in these two examples, it is not necessarily the one that is smaller in amount. Okay, so three very important points to bear in mind when we talk about limiting reagents. Okay, now let's look at some examples uh, using some chemical equations. So over here, zinc reacts with sulfur in a 1 is to 1 ratio. Okay, so experiment A, yeah? if I have 1 mole of zinc, reacts with 1 mole of sulfur, just nice, okay, I will get 1 mole of zinc sulfide. Okay, and in this case, uh, it doesn't make sense to talk about limiting reactants because they react just nice in the correct ratio. So actually, both of them are limiting, okay, and there is nothing in excess, okay, which means that if I increase the quantity of both, I can make more of zinc sulfide. Lah. Experiment B, I have one more of zinc, three moles of sulfur. If I write one more of zinc only requires one, but I have three, so this is in excess. Zinc is the limiting reactant. We use the limiting reactant to calculate the amount of products that I can form. So I have one more of this that can be, can be formed and therefore the reactant in excess will be sulfur. 
Now let's give you some time to complete the remaining three rows, then you can check your answer. Alright, so do you get something like that? Okay, that's great. So sometimes questions may require some form of explanation. For example, in experiment E, let's say they ask, how do you arrive at the conclusion that sulfur is limiting? So we look at the ratio. So over here is 1 is to 1, right? I can say that if I put in 3.6 mole of zinc, by the 1 is to 1 ratio, I would need 3.6 mole here as well, because 1 is to 1. But I only have this amount, so not enough. Okay? Therefore, sulfur is the limiting reactant. So you can use this following template here um, to phrase your answer should you require an explanation for what is the limiting reactant. Let's look at example 1. Over here, we are given 5 mole of nitrogen and 12 mole of ammonia. How do I show that hydrogen is limiting? We must compare the ratio. Okay, so using the template uh, given above, so 5 mole of nitrogen requires 15 mole of hydrogen but I only have 12 mole. Okay, so 5 mole would require 15 mole but I only have 12 so therefore hydrogen is limiting. Part B. To calculate the amount of product, always based on the limiting reactant. So now that I know that this is in excess, I will look at the limiting reactant to calculate the number of moles of product. So the ratio of hydrogen to ammonia, it is 3 is to 2, right? So which means 12 mole will form 8 mole. So therefore, number of moles of ammonia equals to 8 mole. Okay, next question. What is the amount of unreacted nitrogen? So since it's in excess, there will be some that is left over. So we must first find out the number of moles of nitrogen that is reacted. Okay, so number of moles of N2 reacted. How do we find? Again, use your limiting reactant. I have 12 mole, right? So 3 is to 1 here. So it will be 1 third of 12, which is 4 mole. So number of moles of unreacted nitrogen will be my total minus what is used, which is left with this. Alright, so this is a very um, basic question in which they already give you the number of moles in the question. But that's not always the case as we will see. So when they do not give you the quantities in moles, you always have to find the number of moles first. Okay, let's go on to the next question. Now you can pause the video and try this first before listening to the explanation. Okay, over here, you are given two quantities in the question. So whenever you are given two things, you have to find the number of moles for each of them. So this is it. So explanation. Here we find that carbon is the limiting reactant. So we use the number of moles of carbon to calculate the number of moles of carbon dioxide. Okay, so there you have it. You should get 22 grams. Alright, let's now look at question 3. So you may want to pause the video and try the example first. Okay, in this case we find that uh, HCl is limiting because if I have 0 0.05 mole of this, I will require 0 0.1 mole of hydrochloric acid, but I only have this amount. Okay, so you phrase it in words. So HCl is limiting. Okay, so the question asks if I were to collect the gases, is a 50 cm cube syringe enough? Okay, so we have to first find out what is the volume of carbon dioxide gas produced. We use our limiting reagent, which is HCl, to calculate the volume of uh, carbon dioxide that we get. 
So from the equation, the ratio of HCl to CO2, it is 2 is to 1. Okay, so we're talking about the mole ratio. So if I have 0 0.005, I will get 0 0.0025. Okay, so volume of carbon dioxide applying the equation times 24 dm cube. Okay, 0 0.06 dm cube. And we get here 60 cm cube of CO2, which is more than the capacity of the given gas range. Okay, so the answer is no. Okay, moving on to the last example, which uh, links to salt preparation. Okay, so we're going to prepare copper 2 chloride crystals by reacting copper 2 oxide with an acid dilute hydrochloric acid. The teacher commented that the student had used the incorrect quantity of reagent for the experiment. Okay, so explain why. So again, when you are given two quantities in the question, okay, go and find the number of moles for both of them. Okay, so as calculated, this is the number of moles of each of them. We compare the mole ratio. If I have 0.01 mole of this, I need 0.02 mole of HCl, but I have more than what I need, 0.025. Okay, so we say that for this quantity, my hydrochloric acid is in excess. Okay, in this method of salt preparation where we react a base with an acid, insoluble base, the base must always be in excess. Okay, but in this case, the acid is in excess. So that is the problem here. So the minimum amount of copper to oxide I need, we can also find. Okay, so let's say I'm fixed on using this volume of and concentration of hydrochloric acid. How much copper to oxide do I actually need? Okay, so if I use this by it's a 2 is to 1 ratio, right? I would need 0 0.0125 mole of copper to oxide for reaction with HCl. But in this case, the student only used 0 0.01. I need 0 0.0125 at least for the quantity of HCl. So there you have it, the different uh, kind of questions that you can encounter for limiting reactants, but the approaches are always the same. Okay, so let's do a very quick summary. Number one, okay, find number of moles of each given reactant. Then we compare ratio. This will allow us to determine is there any limiting reagent. Okay, and lastly, don't forget, use limiting reagent to calculate the number of moles of product. Okay, so hopefully this video is helpful and you should be able to uh, do any kind of limiting reactant question if you follow the steps. Thanks for watching.